calling this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court uh, on this uh, 13th day of August 2019 at 5 p.m. Uh, I want to ask Bo Wright, if he would, to give us a, a prayer and a place the flag. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing everybody together. Please be with all the magistrates and the judge as they make decisions for the future, for not only for us, but for our kids. Uh, just bless everything that's going on in Ohio County, and, and we look forward to moving forward with you. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the, to the Republic, for which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, you have before you the July 23rd uh, minutes. I'd like a motion to approve that. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Joe. Second by Joe Barnes. Uh, is there any discussion, corrections, or additions? Discussion, corrections, or additions on the minutes. Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Post like sign. Carries. Uh, bills, claims, payments, and transfers. Um, you have them before you, including a late list. I'd like to have a motion to approve and, and put in a motion that includes the late list. So moved. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Second by Sam Small. Uh, have there any questions about the bill for claims, payments, and transfers? Hey, wait a second. Yeah. The late list. The written one? Yeah, but sure. I didn't to look like that. What was that number? I think it's on the original list. Yeah. It's on the right list. Any further questions? Bang none. Roll call, Miranda. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Yeah. I'm on the last page. Hang on just a second. These late lists, so this is new to me. What a, uh, well, we're voting, so I'll, I'll question it later. Yes. Okay. The uh, bills, claims, payments, and transfers are approved. Uh, you have the second reading of the budget ordinance that we passed the first reading of the last minute meeting. Uh, it's Ordinance 2020-1. Uh, I'd like to have a, a motion to approve. So moved. Motion by Larry Count. Second by Jason Bullock. Um, are there any questions? Since uh, we all passed vote for it the last time, I'm going to do a voice call. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Before you, you have the July uh, Treasurer's financial statement. Make a motion to acknowledge. Motion by Joe Barnes. Second. Second by. Uh, Larry Morphew. Any questions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. That motion carries. Do we have the clerk's report? That you can uh, hang on them. Y'all have a copy. Uh, but right now, we uh, acknowledge it. Of course, it's subject to audit. And so now, we have the clerk's uh, July report. Make a motion to acknowledge the clerk's July report. Second. Motion by Jason Bullock, second by Joe Bond. Any questions about that? 
Um, if all y'all have copies, if you ever need to call Bess about it, you can. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. <coughs> uh, Charlie was supposed to have been here to introduce our guest. So on the, we have the Rochester Dam report. We come up and introduce yourself. I'm sorry your introducer's not here. That's okay. Charlie uh, uh, gave me a warning on that. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is John Dix. I'm with the Rochester Dam Regional Water Commission. I serve the uh, commission as secretary. Uh, we've been very fortunate over the past years and, and really gotten a lot accomplished since this body helped form uh, the commission. So definitely appreciate that. Uh, I've just got a short presentation on uh, kind of where we've come and where we're headed. Uh, we want to keep the commission wanted to keep all everybody informed of what what's about to come up. So uh, I'll go through it real quickly here. Uh, of course, a lot of you know that that, that old uh, dam is is an old timber and cradle rock dam. It's uh, it, it served its time very well. It's still somewhat uh, in, in decent shape, but uh, we are concerned that uh, without being able to inspect and understand the uh, uh, structure of it, that uh, whether it is leaking through or not, but uh, there has been erosion over the past years. Uh, of course, the dam was built in 1833, so I mean, from 1833 to 1838, if if all of us had something that was as good that, that good at 181 years old, that'd be that's pretty yeah, awesome. That's great. And uh, it just goes back to the workmanship uh, of, the, of the day and, and the folks that have put that thing together. Uh, in 1848, the mill was constructed on the Muhlenberg side. That is a, a significant issue, and that, that we have challenges with the mill race now. That's there. Yeah. Uh, in 1895, of course, the Corps of Engineers uh, uh, began uh, exerting their powers and took over not only the Rochester Dam, but all the dams on the Green River and along with a lot of dams throughout the country. So, uh, once again, the Corps took that over and, and, and became uh, the owners of that. In 1966, Derrick Stone was added to the dam. That was basically Derrick Stone that was intended for the Woodbury Dam, which is Green River uh, number four, uh, but that dam failed in, in December of uh, 65, and so all the rock that was intended for the, for the Woodbury Dam was then diverted to the Rochester Dam to hopefully stabilize it, and it has. It's been a stabilizing factor. Uh, the Corps was knew that the Woodbury was going to fail, and we couldn't get the rock up there fast enough. So, uh, in 1981, of course, the uh, all the all the uh, dams above number two were closed. Number three and up were closed to navigation, uh, and the Corps basically put them in caretaker status at that point, where they were providing no maintenance at all to the site. And then in two, from 2004 to 2014, the Corps did a disposition study to try to determine what to do with the dams, and they decided to basically uh, 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 turn the dams over to other entities. Of course, thanks to you all, we were formed uh, through, through uh, an action of this fiscal court back in 2013. And once again, we can't say thank you enough for, for what you all have done to, to help us get to where we are today. Uh, we have five commissioners, one from Ohio County Water District, Walt Beasley, is now on there. Harry Storm served us uh, for, for many years and uh, just retired from the uh, commission just a few months ago. In Butler County, water system is represented by Wayne McMartin, and Morgantown Utilities Commission is represented by Randall Gaskin. We also have two at large members that are appointed by this commission here by the High County uh, Fiscal Court, and those are uh, John Wagler, who uh, also works at Purdue Farms, and that is a good representation there. They've been a great participant of, of the process for us and have, have helped us quite a bit. 
and along with good old Charlie, who is on everything, I think, here in Ohio County. But uh, Charlie serves us very well and uh, has done a great job from the inception. Uh, of course, our objective has always been is to, to, own, to obtain ownership of the dam and also renovate and maintain the Rochester Dam. Why? Because it's the most important thing. It's, it's, it's our water source. It's our water source for uh, most of Ohio County. Uh, and also, you know, when you look at it, it's 50,000 folks and 10,000 jobs that are supported by that. So. Commission, uh, uh, after it's formed, was able to do one of the first things that has been ever been done with the Corps of Engineers, and that's obtain a lease of a dam. No other uh, entity in the country has done that over, over the history of the Corps, and we've been the first able to do that. So we obtained a 25-year lease. We obtained that lease because we needed to have that, that occupancy of the dam to be able to obtain funding. And then we continued to work with our Congress and our, our, our uh, representatives. Uh, Congress passed in 2016 to actually deed the, the dam over to the commission and while that was passed in 2016 they they gave orders to the court to do it we still haven't received the deed yet it's been in process it's a work in process with the court in their infinite wisdom as speedy as the core is if you've ever dealt with the core it usually takes multi years to get through their process so we're still working we're hoping to have the deed by the end of this year but uh, we thought we would have it today and we still don't have it so what's that deed going to tell it's going to tell the areas in red uh, about uh, 6.7 acres on the Ohio County side along with another uh, roughly five acres on the Muhlenberg County side that area of blue was actually uh, deeded over to Muhlenberg County uh, uh, several decades ago uh, as, and Muhlenberg County turned that into a park. Continuing on, the, uh, uh, in September of, of 2017, we were able to obtain a $3 million grant from the Economic Development Administration. That's the largest amount they'll give out to a single entity and we were able to obtain that through uh, Senator McConnell's help and, and Congressman Guthrie and Congressman Comer's help. So they, they were a big, big help in us getting that. Uh, in 2018, just last year, we selected an engineering firm to begin design uh, and we selected Stantec. They had done some original studies and were very familiar with the dam. And then by May of this year, we had obtained all permits. Permits are the biggest challenge of this process. We did a muscle survey. We did a bat survey. We also had to go through the State Historic Preservation Office, and they imposed restrictions on what we could do with the dam and the lock. In July night, with our, with our permit secured, we were able to bid the project. We opened bids in July just last month and received a low bid of 2.75 million dollars for the renovation of the dam from Sinesis uh, construction they are a, uh, a river type uh, uh, construction firm out of Ohio just north of Cincinnati and in August this month they're beginning we gave them notice to proceed and they are mobilizing towards the end of this month to begin the process so what are they going to be doing? Well, I'll go over that in just a minute. I just want to make sure that folks understood what the project's going to involve. It's going to involve in restoring the dam to the original elevation. There's been discussions that we're going to raise water level or, or change the water level. That's not the case. We're going back to the original elevation of the dam. We're also, our plan is to reduce leakage through the dam. We anticipate there's leakage through the dam with that 180 year old structure. And we want to improve the water barrier to lock. If there's a failure, first place of, of weakness is the lock itself. The old lock gates are, are, are 
basically 40 and 60 years old. And they've just been sitting there over the last nearly 40 years rotting in the water. And finally, uh, and Charlie is a, is a big proponent of this, is try to improve public safety aspects of the lock. Uh, you know, we've had accidents down there. We're going to try to uh, limit some of those uh, abilities of folks to get into that. So what are we going to do in the re rehabilitation project? The, the rehab project is basically three pieces. And, and this is a, a color photo. It's kind of hard to see, but basically you've got the lock here, all this right there, those, those multi-circles, that's the existing dam, the existing stone on the, on the dam. And, and then over here is the Muhlenberg County side on the uh, left side of the screen there. Uh, we're going to be, our construction work is going to be basically three different pieces. We'll start with the lock. Inside the lock, uh, we've got the existing lock, you've got the existing gates. We're going to pin the back gates open. The, we wanted to remove the gates. The gates are old, they're a hindrance, but the State Historical Preservation Office would not allow us to do that. They said it would, it would be a, an impact to the historical culture of the dam. So they forbid us to do that, so we had to come up with an alternative idea. And so what we're going to do is leave, we're going to pin the, the, back, the downstream gates open, we're going to have to leave the upstream gates in place and basically build a concrete wall behind those existing gates to uh, protect the uh, water barrier. So that's, that's kind of what it's going to look like. We're going to have a V-shaped uh, concrete wall that's built inside that lock. Out in the dam, there's going to be basically two pieces of construction. The first, one of the first pieces will be driving vertical piles across, across uh, up in, upstream of the dam to basically build a new water barrier. And then behind those piles will be uh, concrete grout bags. These are bags that are about 40 feet uh, long. They'll, they'll range in width from 10 to 20 feet and they will be floated out there, pumped full of concrete, and then formed in place, and they'll form a barrier between those, those steel uh, uh, pilings that are driven upstream and the existing dam. And really, those are gonna occur, those are gonna be installed about 10 to 15 feet upstream of the existing dam. I talked about the mill race. The mill race is, is a problem area for us because a lot of the, uh, the original uh, structure that was, was put in place is gone uh, from the old mill race. And that is really, during a drought condition, that's where we lose a lot of our pool. Uh, and so, and it, it has caused problems in 2007 when we had our drought in 27. And also in 2012, we had some challenges. So, uh, Basically, there's going to be a concrete wall built uh, from the end of the pilings over to the uh, Muhlenberg bank side that'll match the same height of the dam, and that will connect the, those steel pilings and, uh, to the uh, Muhlenberg bank. And that, that concrete wall will be two feet wide and be at very, very height uh, based on, on the, the the bed of rock. As you can see, there's bedrock in the in the uh, river, and there's also the uh, on the Muhlenberg County side. There's that mill race area. So those areas are going to be uh, basically a, a concrete weir will be built across there. That's the project itself. Uh, the contractor is is to have the lock work done by October 15th of this year and the remaining river work is supposed to be finished by November 15th of next year. Uh, he anticipates trying to get into the river and start working both not only the lock but the mill race work this fall so uh, we expect to see action on both sides. 
I'm available for any questions, but uh, and if anybody's wondering what that is, that's the uh, Bell of Louisville that came up in 1961. I'm not going to accuse any of y'all being there, but uh, that was when that was, in 1961 when the Bell came out of the river. That's great. That's great. Uh, that's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful project, and it's, uh, uh, like I said, it's been in the process a long time. It was already on the table when I came into office, and that was a long time ago. And uh, one of the uh, first things I did was sign the executive order to begin the uh, Water Commission. That, that, that was a blessing that allowed us to really obtain that funding. Without your all's help, we would not have been able to get that funding. And this affected five counties, uh, but in, uh, and then Purdue, our largest uh, food processor in the area. It affected a lot of people. A lot of cities, water comes from there, and a lot of counties does. That's right. Yeah, that. Yeah, Butler. Right. Even Breckenridge County gets their water out of there. Comes through Ohio County system. Some of it. Mm -hmm. It's quite Certainly a bit of it. Does. You said you're going back to the original pool elevation? Yes, sir. How's that compared to like the summer pool that we have right now? Mm -hmm. Like back in uh, Ohio County. In normal mm -hmm. flows, right it's, it's basically the same. In a, in a low flow drought condition, it, it might affect it a few inches. Uh, we had our engineering firm analyze what the maximum <coughs> increase would be during the lowest flows, and it's five inches. Oh, okay. I knew at one time you was talking about, or there was comments made about coming up even higher because like the farmers upstream was one. Yeah, and we wanted to make sure that was a big concern of the commission was to make sure there, you know, farmers everywhere up through there have put a lot of money in tiles to get their bottomlands drained out, and we did not want to affect that. Okay. In fact, I'm, I'm going from here to Farm Bureau. <laughs> okay, good deal. But we really appreciate you coming and explaining all that to us. Well, we appreciate your all support again. What so was the name of the company that's going to do the work? It's called Sinesis. Okay. Uh, their bid uh, their bid was quite a bit lower than the next one to it. And there was even some questions, can they build dams? And come, they were the only one that bid that actually had done dams before. So they did know what they'd done. They, they, know, they know what they're doing, and they've got a great approach. They had great questions during the bid process. So we feel reasonably comfortable. You're right. The bids range from 2.75 to $7 million. Where are they out of? They're out of uh, uh, just north of Cincinnati uh, in Ohio. That's great. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. The next thing on the agenda was the jail commissary and what about report? This is to present to the court. Okay, I wish she was here. I, I guess we acknowledge that we got it. That's all we can do. I make a motion to acknowledge. Second. Motion by Sam, second by Joe. Did anybody deny that there it lays right there? If, if not, all in favor say aye. 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 Pose like sign. Okay. If you do have any questions, everyone read though. We can have the jailer come and answer any questions that y'all have about that. Um, is it one page each? Yeah. They're all on one page. Yep. Okay. okay, it's time, as we do every year, of setting our tax rates for uh, 2019. Um, we have two options. One is the uh, compensating rate, which means we get the same amount of money we're getting now, basically. And the other one is 4%, which allows us just a little bit more. Um, the 4% increase has been many years that we had that option. And I think we've actually been irresponsible by not taking it most of the time. Because in one year's time, it doesn't raise all that much extra money. But in a, uh, over a period of time and the cumulative effect, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a bit. And as you know, the federal it, government is passing more and more costs and services to the states to provide. And the states are, provide, are, are pushing more and more of it on to local to, to uh, pay to take care of and with the federal government cutting taxes all the time 
uh, it, it it pushes these services down to local level, meaning that <coughs> we have to pay for them. Uh, we got by over the years of doing this because uh, by but not uh, adding anything to our tax base by uh, uh, holding up the ship with uh, Coast Savings dollars. And you know, there's never a meeting that we go to that we don't talk about uh, the loss of Coast Savings money. So it's there for you guys to decide to make a motion to do one or the other. Like I said, I think that we should do the 4%, but this is open for someone to make a motion, then we can have a discussion. Even if we don't do the 4%, we'll still be making as much or more than last year. Oh, we can't. It's the cumulative effect. As things go on, uh, and it, 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 it's the cumulative effect of it. And like I said, I think that we have uh, erred in many, many years of not ever uh, taking, in, taking the 4%. What it is, we've got so many elderly people stuff each you know four percent don't sound like much but it is everything keeps going up and there's got to be a stop but now these figures and they don't include the homestead exception though, the, right. so the homestead so the, what the figures you're seeing that's going to be increased here my, i went and talked to you a little bit it doesn't actually you're it's going to be lower than this because homestead exemptions will be taken out of that first this is based on just a straight tax without any kind of homestead exemptions or anything, other exemptions. Um, yeah. I'm not, I, I'm going to go along with what you want, but I will say I, I'll, I'll do whatever this time too because I know with the last three years, well, the last two and the third, probably have one more year of cuts that we're going to have to make because of the state coming down and we're having to cut every year from our departments or they're having to find places to I think sometime I've been here this is my 13th year we've never I know we've never taken the 4% <coughs> since I've been here and but there's got to I be feel a, like we're getting behind there's got to be a stop in these taxes like last year the uh, health department raised their rates point five percent which is a half percent and they got over a three quarter had over a three quarter of a million dollars in reserve and i asked them i said well why are they raising said well we don't know what's coming down we might need it later on so you know there's got to be a stop into these raises. and I, I agree i mean i understand that i don't you don't want to raise the raise but i'm just saying in 20 years time things don't go they don't go down they go up and we haven't gone up and We've been cut from the state the last two years, maybe one more year, and because the coal mines left out, I was talking to you too, I think $15 million in property tax we're losing because of the coal mine leaving too, so that's going to hurt us a little bit too. Yeah, our base. I, I'm not, I'm not ever going to advocate that we need to raise taxes, but occasionally, I, after 20 years, I think one time to kind of, I'm speaking for offset next year, if we have to take that money out of the, Budget again for the, the departments. This could help offset the other departments and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That's just my opinion on that. You have Guys. to. You have to remember the compensating rate is increasing taxes with the compensating rate. It don't say the same as it did last year. So let's just make that point. Well, the compensating rate it does, but it can go down or up depending on. This time, it, I'm sure it's us, but it, it, depending on it. And I agree with that, but, but if you guys want to have a compensating rate, I think that's fine. I'm just saying, I'm kind of like that. I'm Larry, I'm a little nervous that we haven't been responsible for the years and we're getting behind. I'll make yeah. a motion to do the compensating rate. I second. Any further discussion? Yeah, I think we need a 4% myself. Uh, we can't keep, uh, as some people say, right. keep kicking the can down the road. Right. Well, the, uh, we're going to a 7.5% well, with compensating rate, and it would be a 7.8% if we went 4%. Uh, we don't have the reserve that 
that uh, other people's have. So uh, we're actually looking out for what's in the future because we know it's coming, not because it might come. We know it's coming. So uh, I'm actually here for the four percent. Well, and I, I, I want people to know this is what we're talking about too. So people will know in the county when you're talking uh, twenty-two thousand. Then time you take your exemptions and stuff like that, it's going to drop it down a little bit. So, you know, eighteen, nineteen thousand. I don't really know. Somewhere like that. That that would, what would be increased. All right. Plus, the compensated rate increases a little bit too. But with that, that's just what we're talking about yeah. in a year's time. Yeah, our property tax rates are very low here. Probably the lowest in the world. Uh, we have very low property taxes in our county uh, for the for the county government part. Our school tax and some of the others are up there pretty good. But as far as what the county itself does, did we not, if, if we did not have occupational tax and still some coast service money in, we couldn't even make our legal obligations, the things that are mandated by the state that we pay. We couldn't even pay them with just our property tax at this point. If, if you did nothing but what the law said you had to do. I mean, we do have some other income, but if we didn't have it, we do have other revenue. But if we didn't have it, we would not be able to do <coughs> our obligations. No, it's one motion. The other, we have to vote on the first one. First one. If it fails, we can make another one. Just go ahead and roll call. Yeah, we have a Mark, you? Yes. Small? No. Mark? Yes. Small? No. Mark? Yes. Small? No. Yeah, I would like to see us check it out, but I mean, Where I mean, we have to do something, so I think eventually we would like to, but I get this point yes. Barnes, yes, Johnston, no, Count, yes. Okay, M motion passes. I think we're going to have, I don't see the thought process would be different on these other two things, but we have to do it too. That one passed. We have to do the same thing on the personal and the motor craft. so we'll need two more motions. And I don't assume that you would think any differently on the other two. On the personal property compensating rate, so move. Second. Motion by uh, Larry Count, second by Larry Morphew. <coughs> Roll call. Morphew? Yes. Small? No. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? No. Can? Yes. Okay. That uh, that one passing. It is a compensating rate. The uh, third one is the uh, motor vehicle and watercraft. It's staying the same. It stays the same. It stays the same every year. Yeah. Do I have a motion on the? Yeah, you do, Judge. So good. On the compensating rate. Okay. Second? Anybody? Have motion by Larry Cam. I'll second. Second by Larry Morphew. Morphew. Yes. There's no changes away on this. Yeah. So, yes. Small. 40 year old law Small. Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Okay. Is there something got a sign on this somewhere? Sign the sign on the bottom of this one. Um, I haven't signed the minute shit either. Um, that's, um, could make it so we're just acknowledging how you receive this. I thought we already done And just for a point of information, what percent does the oh, compensating rate percent. increase? Yeah. No, I'm not the, not the figures, but what percentage does it uh, increase the tax? Um, 7.3 right to 7.5. Yeah. 7 .3 so two-tenths of one percent? Yes. Okay. I should have seen that. Yep. Okay. Uh, the, uh, another thing, the clerk gave us the the, is it minutes or what would you call it? Just report? Uh, no, it's the revenue form from the board assessment of appeals. We just need to acknowledge having received it so I can put it in the minutes. Yeah, another thing from Bess. Acknowledge we received it. So moved. Motion to Sam Small. Second. Second by Joe Barnes. 
Um, any discussion? Being none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Uh, next we have, and you do have a copy of this in front of you here, uh, the Sheriff's uh, uh, Franchise and Mineral se Settlement. Uh, Is this acknowledged as well? Uh, yes. It's so, due subject to audit, yes. So Motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Sam Small to acknowledge that we received this. Um, any discussion or questions for the Sheriff? He liked the question. He's here. Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. A motion carries. Uh, but this next one is an ordinance. Well, this first reading. Yes. Yeah. The sheriff's fees uh, has to be set by ordinance, and that's ordinance 2020-2. Uh, have you got a copy of that here? I'm looking for it. We got a copy of that. Ten dollars more. Yeah, it's a Tracy, that, that you're, present, you're presenting that, right? That was on your behalf about the sheriff's fees? Yes. I think Justin. Yeah, I prepared it. Uh, what, okay. what we did was we changed the statute yeah. that increased some of the fees uh, because of costs, I would assume. And so we're just putting what they what they indicated within the statute. And you've looked over it and you're here with what you. I'm making motions to accept the fees. Uh, second, first reading. Second. Uh, motion by Joe Barnes, second by Larry Cam. Any further discussion? Thank you, Larry. Joe, uh, Jason wants to see it. Oh, okay. This is the first reading. We have, okay. We do have motion second, so. Did you want to read it? No, I'll get the first right. one second. Yep, all right. We'll do it both costs. It's this ordinance. Right then I'll sign the contract into Red Sox. There it is. Mainly what I've seen is the process of cases, you know, it's going up ten dollars per case. It's just kind of my general with that general yeah. 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 There's there's certain fees with respect to filing suit. Uh, that the clerk gets, the sheriff's department gets, and then also for service of summons and subpoenas and those things that they have to do. Uh, any further questions? Being none, roll call. Morphew? Yes. Small? Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cam? Yes. All right. Uh, next. Uh, and this. We have to. We we passed this last meeting, but we have to do a formal resolution so I can sign the contract on the uh, flex funds. It's the same thing we voted on last meeting. So uh, I'll go ahead and since I presented, I'll go ahead and move that we uh, to pass this resolution, and then we'll everyone have to sign whether it's a yay or nay. So. Do I have a motion and a second? I'll make a motion. Motion by Sam Smile. Second. Second by Jason Bullock. We had a discussion last time, so go ahead and roll call it. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cam? The reason for, for my no vote will be because that. Uh, as I said at the last meeting, we're $240,000 behind anybody else on the court, any other district. And that would be the reason for my no vote. And so, enough said, I guess. Yeah. Okay, y'all sign this and pass it on down. You can sign in the, in the note column. And give me the contract and I'll sign it. 
Thought so you can get it back to him or We got that one down. Uh, I, Charlie was supposed to be in here. I don't understand to present this deal on the Cherie Bridge. Uh, I know the gist of it. Uh, anybody, both Larry Morphew and Sam Small informed us of a, of a way of get from the conference they were at. They, they, uh, they gave us a uh, way to get that uh, brush moved out of Rough River. Uh, we we uh, applied for it. We've received the funds. Uh, I would like, and any of you come in and look at it if you want to, but him not being here puts us on his time stop. But I have to sign a contract with them. And here's the gist of it. The gist of it is, they're going to build FEMA. If they get the money from FEMA, they'll get paid for the work. If they don't, they've done it free. The work's done anyway court cannot be built. Right. So I would like a motion to authorize me to sign that contract. So, well, before you go, when I, when I was originally talking to them and motion they were in. involved in it, that wasn't how it was going to go. How it was going to go was they would not do the work until FEMA would come up with the money. And I explained the situation and I explained what they were working with and what it was doing. And told them and they said well we're for sure we can get it so let's do the work and if you don't get paid we don't get paid and I said now if you can come up with that and you come and see it and he wanted to come and see it and look at it and he did then he said we'll go with that and I said I think that's acceptable and uh, that's when they come down and seen it which I didn't get to go with them and see it but uh, yeah. They were very excited. I've talked about talked to him since then, and he's very excited about getting it done. Good deal. And, uh, good deal. You'll second so, the motion. So I'll make the motion. Uh, Larry Cam made it. Oh, I'll second. It. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Larry. I didn't hear you. And, the, and this motion is to authorize me to sign this contract. Wait, Sounds like a win-win situation. For the removal of debris on this, on this. Sam Small, Larry Cam. Uh, what? They're talking to someone there concerning funds. I think. Okay. Is that? I'm, I'm assuming that you send that contract just. Just in case beforehand. Yes, for a sign. Just so yes. I see. Yes. Make sure it does say that. Of course. Uh, okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Um, I think we'll go ahead and down through here. We're going to do a, a short uh, close session on personnel. Let's go ahead and get this uh, OC the report done so they don't have to stay. And. Uh, We'll talk about the other things, and we'll make this move this to the bottom of personnel to the bottom of it. And I'm gonna, when we do go, we're going to ask Renetta and Keith to go with us. Okay, Chase, you're up. If you'll forgive me, I'm going to uh, break protocol and uh, not give you an oral quarterly report tonight because there's more pressing business that we need to attend to. I'll email you all a, a written quarterly report, but. Um, the reason I'm before you here tonight is primarily because uh, this will be my last time before you. Uh, it's come time for me to step down from this position. My last day will be next Friday, August 23rd. And um, the OCEDA board has voted to name uh, my assistant director, Jody Ashby, as interim executive director. 
So I need your final approval um, to hire her as such at the salary of $42,500 that they agreed. How much? 42500 And And when will the begin date be? That'll be August 26th, Monday after my departure. Okay. Um, was the board totally in uh, acceptance of her as a new director? Yes, interim executive director. There's going to be a new search to take place, and you know whoever that. Uh, she just temporarily then. Correct. Okay. okay. It may not be, but yeah, but do a search. Yeah, I, I just want to know how the board. I make a motion we uh, approve that Joe become the executive director at four thousand five hundred. Second. Okay. On personnel issues, you don't discuss. She's real call. Roll call. Morphies. Morphies. <coughs> yes. Small. Yes. Hello. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Chase, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you've done great. And let's don't. Uh, he and I have one more official thing we're going to do together before he leaves, right? We're going to Muhlenberg County next Monday, right? Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you working for us. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jody. Yes. We have high hopes. Uh, if any of y'all haven't met her and talked to her, you need to do so. It, uh, it'll be, a, it'll be a, an interesting experience. I, no, I mean, not a rewarding experience, is what I meant to say. A rewarding experience. Thank you. Interesting. I like the word interesting a lot. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, we've had uh, citizens that came to us wanting to see about us having a decency ordinance. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, with, with a little research, at first we didn't find it, but... Uh, after uh, research a little further, we did have one. It was passed during while Judge Hunsaker was judge. Larry Cam was on the court then. He actually voted for it. Uh, I don't know why. I'm, I'm so surprised about that. But anyway, it's pretty in depth. But uh, I wanted in the record that we did have it, and I also would question Justin about the enforcement of it. Make sure there was adequate provisions in there for uh, enforcement, and. Uh, Go ahead and quote me what you told me, Justin. Uh, well, just uh, you know, with any ordinance, there's normally a penalty section. Uh, with this ordinance, it also provides the county sheriff, fire department, uh, state police, uh, constable, any of those can expect any sexually oriented business to see that they abided by the terms of the ordinance. So there's a number of people yeah. that could check in on those businesses, though I, yeah. I don't know if we have it. That's good. So if uh, I suppose if we had one, the sheriff might spend several nights there inspecting it before we... I'm, te I'm teasing, sheriff. It might take a while to inspect it if we have a new strip joint come in. Remember, I need more man Hey, moving on. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to get that cleared up because there's been some constituency that's been asking about that. We found that it is in so place. This one here is not. This asking about what? Uh, the, if we have a decency okay. ordinance. Go but this one right here is not ours. This is City of Hartford, it looks like. I was reading over it. Well, we have one too. County. Yeah. Okay. I was checking it um, All right. I just wanted to clear that up. I need this to go in a, close, uh, a short closed session of the personnel with Keith and Renata and you guys. So I have a motion for that. Okay. Under Section F. You want to ask for any public business? If we're, are we going to be allowed? I don't think so. It should be, man. We just got to make motion. you aware of motion. motion by Larry Cowan. Who seconded it? I'll second it. Second by Joe Barnes. Uh, it should take a second. It's just one, basically one issue. Make a motion. So we go back into the last Make a motion to go back in the session. Here a second? Second. We got a second to We're back in open session. Yes. Uh, give me those uh, personnel now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, I've got to tell you, for, for the, we did not uh, do any business while we was in closed session. We talked about personnel issues. Uh, no action was taken. Um, I've got several to put up here for hire tonight, and most of them are seasonal. I'm going to start out with Charles Sapp as equipment operator at 12.25 an hour, effective 814, and his seasonal road department. I put him up, roll call. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Camp? Yes. Next one is Dakota Gill, and he's equipment operator seasonal at 12.25 an hour, Effective 814. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. <coughs> Pull up? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Camp? Yes. See if there's another one here. Yeah, here it is. Uh, next is Garland Renfro, a seasonal uh, heavy equipment operator at 12.25 an hour. And he is also affected 814 to the seasonal um, roll call. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Okay. And then uh, the next one is in the uh, occupational tax uh, office. We've got a, a, a part time 100 spot there. Uh, and we're going to bring in Sheila Moore, who's been there as Mirkor, and her time's running out uh, at the end of this month at the rate of 10.62 an hour. Uh, yeah, effective 9.119. What is this? Uh, full time? No, it's it's part time 100. Oh. Um, means cannot work more than 100 hours a month. Okay. Uh, roll call. Morphew. Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Uh, the next one is uh, for the park. Uh, and the uh, if the person is Tori Kennison. This same situation. She's been there as a uh, uh, miracle worker. And this will be effective 9 1 as well. And at the rate of 10 62 an hour. Tori Kennison. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Camp? Yes. Okay. Back to Renata. Um, what was the rate on that, Judge? 1062. Is there any uh, committee reports? I don't, I'm not aware of any committees meeting this uh, in the last three weeks, but if there is, well, now it's time to report. If there's none, uh, if there's none, uh, let's go to Master's comments, and let's start with Sam Small. No, I'm not going to say nothing good. You are going to take me to Louisville, though, next I month. Will. I mean, next week after next. Okay. No, thank you, Judge. Okay. Joe. I have one, uh, been noticing we're getting around spraying, and uh, been noticing we're getting a lot of coverage with it. The only thing that I kind of want to, I don't think it's going to hurt us this go around, but we seem to be spraying chemicals that's killing everything, and I, I really would, uh, I really think we need to be just targeting the weeds and leaving the grass, or we're going to end up with erosion problems. And, uh, you know, that's we can end up with major erosion problems with some of these big rains we get if we don't have the grass on the side banks. And it's mainly the weeds that everybody calls in complaining about. Most of our grasses won't get over knee high, and we can still try to target, you know, one mow in a season. But uh, in that Roadmaster course, I went through the state, highly recommended, you know, leaving your grass and your, your grass root uh, vegetation there to keep the banks from eroding. Yeah, Joe, I would agree. I've been out on some of my roads in the flatlands or the flat, flat ground, flat yeah. roads, and I think it's doing an excellent job. It's killing the grass and everything, but I do uh, have your concern as well about spraying on banks, especially the steep banks. Yeah, you know, you know I think that, uh, you know, doing it this 
one time around late in the season, you're not going to hurt us. But, uh, you know, I think next year we need to well, we get our chemicals worked out. Well, space, or maybe not mow as late and give the grass plenty of time to grow back. We're awfully late getting started this year. If we'd done this before the Johnson grass got a hole, well, and there's a, it would have been That's good. the thing that we need to also look at is that we we've got the last baby. Last baby. Is what is that time? Is that similar to the rail now? See, I see, actually told us I was at the meeting and there was a fusion and there was one that was, uh, there was two out there that we need to spray in. Like more expensive though, isn't it? Really? It's more expensive. That's the point. It is. Okay. Uh, there's two out there that will make the uh, Johnson grass dormant all year, and that's the number one that we have that uh, is the complaint. If it yeah. gets so tall, then it falls over in the roadways. And, and they, it, it, it blocks stop signs. And it also do the, the horse weeds too. And they and they recommend you know getting it sprayed like March is what they were saying. So you know next year we can get. They were no, talking about spring and late March, getting ahead of 40 even really got very high. Spring and 6 it, to 12 inches, 12 inches of length of max. Yeah. Um, and, and you got to spray it early and it'll, it'll make it dormant all year is what they were claiming. Um, but I just think we need to look into that a little bit more this, this fall and this winter and get get our chemicals right. We'll, if we don't watch it, we'll end up with our ditches, our banks are eroding and our ditches full of uh, silt. No. Well, that's it is. I mean, I've noticed it all around the county. <clears throat> now the coverage is great. Mm -hmm. I just think we need to yeah. we need to research the chemicals a little bit more. Okay. Anyway, that was it. Okay, Larry. Uh, just what, I had one question. You know, we were talking about the debris over Rough River. Yeah. Uh, what was the timeline on that? When they were going to get started? Or um, well, y'all vote. And let me get this contract signed. Uh, the, uh, I am. We were supposed to have it physically here in front of me tonight. Something's happened, but anyway, it's not here. Uh, but uh, uh, right away, I mean, like within the next weeks. Okay. If we have a uh, have to have a special call meeting, uh, we might add that on the agenda. If we get that contract or whatever, where it can get signed and voted by the court. Okay. okay. That's all, Judge. Okay, Larry. When are they going to be doing our uh, black topping? Do you know? No. Uh, we, we're fussing them every day. Have you talked to? Okay. Yeah, the, they're they're busy, but I'm hoping they work. Cause hopefully they've got all this ready to do now. They got all these uh, discretionary roads still to pave. Those three, and then the ones that y'all gave them, and then hopefully these flex fund things will be approved within the next couple of weeks. So I hope soon. I hope I'm not last this year because the road was supposed to got done last year didn't get done till this spring. Uh, I'll try to get them to get that way first, but basically when you turn Scotty's loose, they'll usually let me name one that's first, and after that they pick them. You know, however it makes their equipment move good. Uh, this, Justin, you got anything? I don't judge me. Uh, does anyone have anything for good of the body in the general public? Yes, sir. I just want to say how much I appreciate I think what's going to happen with that log jam and the bridge but my wife and I have made a commitment and anything any of you guys can do to help us <coughs> this is going to be an ongoing problem uh, the gentleman I hated he left because he pretty much said that the Corps, Corps of Engineers owns the river well why don't they do anything with it that, 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 and that I'm won't... telling you sir this the water's down Water's down like this, and it's up. And these trees are just falling in. I know. It. I mean, you uh, guys saw that jam. It's eight mm -hmm. times bigger than that. Right. Yeah. The lady it's that unbelievable. The lady that we hired tonight is interim economic development thing is actually working on. Thanks. She may of knowing knowing some a way of trying to get some dredging done on the river. Yeah. So we're working at it. Of course. Uh, uh, and the inter her interest would be I mean, the I actually, I, don't, I always say too much, but I mean, I feel guilty. I'm getting mine cleaned up. Yeah. But I feel for all the other people. And I've, I've been coming to this farm for 40 years. I've been in charge of it since 2011. And I've never seen nothing like it. I mean, i I got to believe they're doing something to cause this. To cause this. And as you know, we have one downriver. Back in I think 011, and it was bad. I saw it. My son was involved in duty, 
uh, natural resources over it and everything. But I mean, you see these things, they're scary, and they could happen anywhere. And we've got one trying to start down just a little ways. You know, and I know this has caused it, but I mean, now this river, I mean, that thing is scary. I mean, I can walk up. I used to be able to walk down to this river from this point, the point where you guys saw it, and it's 25 feet down to the bottom of the river now, straight down, straight down for 30 feet. I mean, the dirt we have lost is unbelievable. I don't know how they'll, I don't know how they'll get out there to clean it, and I'll do anything I can to help them, but uh, something's got to happen with this. This core engineers, all they do is tell you what you can't do, and they tell you right up front, we can't do nothing. We don't well, clean rivers. Well, who cleans rivers? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you an example of what does work on the and there's no, Caney Creek which pulls into that river it doesn't have any problems anymore yeah. there was a watershed board put in place maybe you, how long ago you think uh, 40, 50 years ago Yeah. maybe 50 years ago and it's existed yeah. and they keep it clean and mowed the sides and it stays in good shape all the time but here's the downside Everybody that's got property on that watershed that goes into Caney Creek pays a little tax. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt them. Or it don't hurt us. I pay it. I'm on, I'm on that. I mean, this Corps of Engineers, it's a good job for me because they couldn't even get this guy a, a deed. They bought the property. I thought I understood and they were waiting for the deed. I mean, it just seems like they don't do nothing. They don't. They don't do nothing. But, but they did get the, uh, we got the lease and deed should come any time, hopefully for the first of the year. Yeah. I mean, I just, that's all, I mean, I talk to them people, and they tell you to call somebody else, and they tell you to call somebody else, and I mean, hey, it's a river. I mean, but I, I appreciate what you, what you people have done. Yeah, we've been working on it for months. I don't, I don't months. know what I've done without you, you know. Yeah. Well, right, I appreciate you telling us that. Right now being an ideal time, because the river is really down. Right. Is, but hopefully they're going uh, to be able to move quickly. I would be here tonight, because I've got... Two keys I got made for the gate, and I was going to give them to them, but I'll probably take them to ER tomorrow. Okay, sounds good. I do want to say one more thing, and it has nothing to do with the river. Um, my husband and I are members of Cousin Grove Baptist Church that got broken into about three weeks ago. And he's a trustee, and I'm the piano player there. I just want to commend our sheriff's department, and I think he was, thank you for cracking that case within 24 hours. That was a big load off of our church, and they gave us helpful hints on what we should do to protect it. And I just want to commend the Sheriff's Department and all of them that helped us crack that case and make us feel a little bit easier around Pleasant Grove. It took 30 minutes, and I'm hoping that maybe somewhere down the road we can get somebody stationed where if we have a problem in Fordsville area, we that 30 minute timetable will end up about 15 minutes. So, but that's just a wishful, hopeful hint down the road. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Everybody appreciates your <coughs> time. We got a lot done. Okay, yeah. Uh, my question is you know, I work for the ambulance service, and we had a gentleman that actually lives, off the, lives on the road that I live off of that went off the bridge, car and everything. Uh, Mr. Locke ended up being in the Davis County Hospital. Uh, but my question is, what are we going to do about that bridge? Because that's what oh, people are asking. I already have. They put signs yeah, and reflectors up, right? Kay. We need some type that need to be brought out so the people won't run off. The signs not going to stop running off the bridge. Well, it is a bridge. It goes straight down. Uh, we're talking about other bridges. You can replace the one on railroad bed road. Uh, but we need that. Larry's my manager, and I probably should talk to him first, but since I'm here, I've had people ask me. What are we going to do about it? You know, we're trying to make it more visible for the short term, and hopefully this winter we can figure out a way to put some guardrails on it. Uh, there's narrow bridge signs up. That's one thing. Two cars can't have, meet on it. They just now been recently. It used to be signs that said one lane bridge. That I don't know how long ago they've been down, but they've been down for well, years. We're now gonna, you'll, you'll have to put them back up, but it's after the fact. Well, I mean, you can't unring a bell. We're trying to keep the bell from ringing again. Right. So. Uh, we're going to do our best to uh, keep from happening. Maybe this winter we can figure out a way to mount a uh, guardrail. There doesn't, uh, there's not an obvious way to mount it to the bridge. 
so it would be loose from one end span to the other end and, and it would be kind of like dangling there. So if we can figure, figure out a way of facing the guardrail to the bridge, we'll definitely put the guardrail on. Have you ever thought about possibly trying to find a new bridge? Make it wider? That, would, uh, that bridge is not that old, and, and I'd say not until they are, all the others that are in bad shape are fixed. We're getting there. It's not out of the question, but it's down the road a ways. Okay. That's, I'll go back and tell the people that. Thank okay. You. All right. This means adjourned. Do you need this? <clears throat>